proudly we hail... From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your army to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Army. Our story is entitled, The Promise. And this is the story of a man on a special mission. A mission that two soldiers will always remember. As proudly we hail the United States Army's infantry. Our first act curtain will rise in just one moment. But first, today your rapidly expanding United States Army needs intelligent young men. Young men with ability and ambition. Men intelligent enough to recognize the vital need for a strong armed force. Men with ability enough to be trained in a necessary job. Men with ambition enough to secure the future for themselves and their loved ones. Well, now tell me, fellas, does this description fit you? Can you qualify? For full information on how you can fit in with the finest, you check with your nearest United States Army recruiting station. Remember, team up with the Army, and you team up with success. I should be coming to the crossroads. Ah, oh, there they are. From here in the distance, you can see the hill. It was on that hill here in Alsace-Lorraine that a man named Adolf Hitler stood for the first time as a conqueror on French soil. And it was on that hill, well, something else far more important happened. Uh, pardon, monsieur. Can I be of service to you? Well, I'm just going to Billingheim. In that direction, two kilometers. Bonjour. Two kilometers away from the answer I'm hoping to find. Up there on the hill. The old man doesn't know it, but this isn't the first time I've traveled down this road. But it was a lot longer ten years ago. Today I'm a master sergeant. I'm on my first leave after being reassigned to Europe, and I'm retracing a path I once followed. Then I was Staff Sergeant Dunlop. Squad leader of the 1st Squadron, 3rd Platoon, Company D. In January 1945, hoofing it along the icy road with my squad. We'd been picking them up and laying them down all that day, even though as an 81-millimeter mortar squad, we had a jeep assigned to us. But as our section leader, Lieutenant Anders, had told us that morning... Men, we're moving out to another sector of the front 10 miles from here. Company A is relieving another company, and they'll need our support. Now we'll have to load up the jeep and trailer with the gun and ammo. And I'll go ahead with it to reconnoiter for a position. Sergeant Dunlap will march you to the town of Billingheim, which will be company headquarters. So this is Billingheim. Looks like a one-horse town without a horse. What would you expect, Tiger Broadway? Hey, soldier. You know where company A headquarters is? A company? Uh-huh. Going so fast, I hardly know where I am, let alone A Company yet. Sergeant Dunlap. Lieutenant Anders. I've been keeping an eye out for you. I've got our position picked out. Oh, uh, hope it's nice and defilade. Sure is. Right up this draw here. Oh, it looks fine, sir. We'll dig in here and fire right over the top of the hill. You better get started right away. I'll go check in at a company ACP and try to select targets. Mm -hmm. As soon as you get dug in, report to me there. Yes, sir. Okay, let's get going on this. Our gun tube's been cold too long. <laughs> Private First Class Tiger Smith. He was only about five foot five, skinny in his late thirties, but he was the toughest, scrappiest, on-the-go guy I'd ever seen in all my years in the Army. If ever a man lived up to his nickname, it was Tiger. Mind if I uh, give you a hand with the emplacement, Tiger? Okay, but keep out of my way. What's your name? Mallory. Private Mallory. Just fresh out of basic training. Had joined my squad that very day as a replacement, and he had a lot to learn. In more ways than one. 
How many bags should I fill with sand, Tiger? Just keep going until I tell you to stop. Okay. Hey, you know something, Tiger? I know some things. What's on your mind? The best thing ever happened to me, getting on this quad. What do you mean? Because you're in it. Oh. Sure. Yeah, I've followed your career ever since I was a kid. Boy, you were sure one sweet flyweight. If there ever was a boxer who deserved to be champ, you were it. What a terrific right cross to the heart you had. Say, Tiger, how come you lost that fight with the champ that time? I thought can sure it. you... Huh? I said can it. Now get this through your noodle, kid. You got anything to say to me, keep it in the line of business. P.F.C. Smith. What I did before I became P.F.C. Smith is my concern and nobody else's. Get me? No, sure, but... Okay, now we understand each other. Take a break. Yeah, have a cigar. With Tiger sparking the way, it didn't take long to get our mortar set up and an alternate position, Doug. When it was finished, I told Tiger to grab the walkie-talkie and to come with me to A Company CP. Now, Sergeant, here's the situation. As you can see, the 1st Battalion is occupying this forward slope of the hill overlooking the town of Forbach and a good deal of Sar Valley. Yes, sir. We're really looking down their throats, aren't we? Yes, but they're looking up ours. According to present plans, our advance will be halted here temporarily, so we'll have time to select some good targets. Mm -hmm. But we've got to have a good forward observer's post for you. And I think I know where it is. Oh, where, sir? Down there. Just beyond the tree line. You mean that church steeple? Yes. But, sir, we won't last a minute there. They'll be watching it all the time. Sure. But there's what used to be a rectory building nearby. That pile of rubble, see? Oh, yeah, yeah. The basement's okay. And you can get a fine view of the whole town of Forbach from its window, its front window. It'll be dark in a few minutes, so you'll be able to get to it without being spotted. I hope. We made it all right, Tiger and I. The rectory was located about 200 yards beyond our front line, which was at the edge of the woods behind us. We were all alone in no man's land. Well, it might be only a pile of bricks, but it's got a foxhole to be a mile. Yeah. Now get the radio going and tell Corporal Walker to send up a man with a phone line, huh? I'll check the aerial photo map for targets, meanwhile. Right, Sarge. Red dog to blue sty. Red dog to blue sty. Okay, Blue Star. Got all your aiming stakes set out, so be ready to start with fire orders tomorrow. Okay, Red Dog. Roger. Roger and out. We're all set now, Tiger. Might as well break open a K ration. Okay. So that's Deutschland down there. Yeah. We're right in the middle of the Siegfried line. And I hope we're soon out of it. On the other side. Don't worry, we will be. If we keep moving at this rate. What's that? Coming from the church steeple. I'll check. Give me a couple of those hand grenades. Tiger, is that you? Yes, yeah, Sarge. Come on, get in here. It's that new guy. Mallory. Oh, hello, Sarge. I got lost. I thought I saw you over there. Look, if you want to get yourself lost, go ahead. It's your own neck. You have to be so noisy about it. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Being sorry doesn't okay, help. Okay, okay. Lay off, Tiger. Got the phone, Mallory? Yeah, yeah, and the wire. Good. Tiger, check it through to see if it works. Now, right, Mallory, you better beat it on back. Tell Corporal Walker to make sure he sets up a guard. We're okay. Get going. Oh, right, Sarge. Uh, look, if it's okay with you, Sarge, I'll pull first guard shift. Okay, Tiger. Okay. Sarge, hmm? wake up. Oh. Here's something in the church. Oh, no. Not Mallory again. I'll go take a look, see, and if it is... I'll come with you. Wait a minute. I don't hear anything. Neither, neither do I. That came from the tower. Let's go. Now, easy now. There he is. Hold my rifle. I'm going to take him prisoner, friend or foe. I'll cover you, Sarge. I crept along slowly, quietly. All I could make out was a shadow sitting by the steps leading up to the bell tower. Closer, closer. Until finally I jumped, grabbed him, and put my hand over his mouth oh. and dragged him oh. back to our cell. You want the flashlight, Sarge? Yeah. Oh. But is the blanket still over the window? Still there. Okay, turn on the flashlight. Oh. Let's see where we've landed. GI uniform. Okay, buddy, let's see your dog tags. 
<sighs> Dog tags? That's right. I have none. He's got an accent, Sarge. So I notice. What outfit are you from? Outfit? Yeah, yeah, unit, you know. Ah, uh, oui, oui. I am with the Free French Army Corps. French Army? Sarge ain't anywhere near us. Look, soldier, where do you get that stuff? We don't have any French outfits around here. I know that. We fight now near Colmar. That's about 80 miles to our south. Sure. So what are you doing way up here? I am here on a special mission. Your company commander, he knows about me. He does? That's funny. Yeah, it sure is. If he knows about it, we should have been informed. Well, I'll check with him in the morning. Now, uh, soldier, this, this mission you're on, what makes it so special? What makes it special? I shall tell you. It is a promise that does so. A promise? Oui, a promise that I made five years ago, and which I must now fulfill, no matter what the cost. He was to fulfill that promise, all right. But the cost... Well, that's something I still have to find out now, ten years later. And the answer is at the top of that hill. You're listening to the proudly we hail production of The Promise, and we will return in just one moment for the second act. Ask most anybody what they want out of life, and a great majority of the answers can be boiled down to just one word. That one word is happiness. Well, now, happiness is a lot of different things to a lot of different people, but basically, I guess you might say that it's the achievement of your goals. To be happy is to be successful in whatever you do. And in today's highly specialized world... Training is the key to success. If you're a young man of service age, you can get free training worth thousands of dollars by enrolling now in your United States Army's new Reserve for You training program. Under this plan, you can enter the course of your choice and be trained in such interesting fields as X-ray operation, photography, automotive maintenance, and communications. In all, there are over 150 courses to choose from. So for complete information on how you can benefit from this program, you visit your local United States Army recruiting station. Remember, team up with the Army, and you team up with success. Standing here in this peaceful meadow, now knee-deep in flowers and grass, that night in the bombed-out cellar seems far away. But when I close my eyes, I can see it. Tiger standing guard in the doorway. A little candle casting its feeble light on our prisoner's face. First, mes amis, I will show you my identification cards. I have no tags, as you call them. Uh, here. You see? Father Andre. Well, you, you must be... Oui. I am a chaplain in the French army. Hey, what's that I hear? You a preacher? A preacher? Well, yes, that is what you may call me, but... I'm now on leave. You see, when I hear that American troops are moving close to Forbach, Forbach is... Yeah, uh, yeah, I know, the town down there in the valley. I mean, I'm sure the town will be liberated very soon, so I request from my commander permission to come here. But why here? There are no French soldiers here. I know that, but there are French people, my people. You see this church, I am the priest of it. Or perhaps I should say, I was. You... I don't get it, Padre. It is like this, Monsieur Jean. I was priest for this church from 1935 to 1940, until the day Hitler came to this very spot. It was right outside the door that he stood. I was alone in the church. The people were in their houses. As he stood with that stupid grin on his face, well, I took the bell rope, and we have a certain way we ring the bell for funerals and days of mourning, and that is the way I rang the bell. He shouted that it be stopped. Well, maybe I was foolish, but I did not stop. I could not. But they stopped it. His guard pulled the bell out from its yoke, and it crashed to the bottom of the tower. I was taken to jail, but escaped a few days later. I made my way to Switzerland, but not before doing something. What was that, Padre? I came here and buried the bell because I knew they would take it and melt it down to make bullets out of it. Uh -huh. And so now I've come back, as I promised to myself that day, to make it ring again in freedom. 
I see. Well, Sergeant, I'm very tired. I've been sitting there in the tower since this morning, thinking and remembering. Sure, well, I understand. It... Here's an extra blanket. You just go ahead and get yourself some shut-eye. Thank you, Sergeant. Mm -hmm. You fall for that line of his, Sergeant. How do you know it's a line? The whole thing. It's fishy, I tell you. Well, don't worry about him. You keep an eye on him until tomorrow morning, and then I'll check with Lieutenant Anders. <laughs> Uh, Roger, Lieutenant Anders. Do you know anything? I'll find out and call us back. Now, we've got work to do. Tiger, check with Corporal Walker to see if his aiming stakes are okay and his range card made out. Right. Good morning, Sergeant. Oh, good morning, Padre. I've got an extra K ration if you could go for some breakfast. Oh, merci, Sergeant. I could. Now, right over there in the corner. Corporal's all set, Sergeant. Good. Now, all we have to do is wait for a company fire order. And that might be it. Red Dog. Oh, hello, Lieutenant Anders. Yeah? Well, what do we do, sir? Okay, Lieutenant. Roger and out. Hey, you. The padre or whatever you are. My lieutenant just checked with A Company about you. Eh, uh, oui? He never even heard of you. Uh, that is impossible. I talked with him myself yesterday morning, and he checked with division headquarters. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, now, you just stay put here and don't try anything. The MPs will be down to pick you up later. Yeah, but, Sergeant... Look, I you... got things to do now. You'll have to do your explaining to them. Hand me those binoculars, Tiger. Just about then, company fire orders came down. We were kept pretty busy for a while. The squad did all right. We managed to clob our crossroads and potential assembly points in the town below us, even though we did get some counter stuff in return. Then it, too, died away, and for a while it was quiet. That's laying them in there, Sarge. You sure know how to call them. Well, maybe. But if you don't have a good gunner, no matter how you call them, it wouldn't help. Uh, pardon, Sergeant. Now? Yeah? I have been thinking. It seems as if the MP will not come yet for a while, but I can prove to you I am what I say. Now, how's that? The bell. If I show to you where it is buried, then it must be true what I say. If it were not, how could I know the location of the bell, eh? Well, maybe you got something there. Hey, Sarge, you ain't... It will not take too long to dig it out. It is not very deep. I'll tell you what. We got nothing to lose. Tiger, you go with him. I'll let him out of your sight. But I won't. Oh, merci, Sergeant. Merci. Red Dog. Yes, Lieutenant Anders. Is that right? I'm glad to hear it. Sure, sure, sir. We will. Thanks. Roger. Hey, Tiger. Yes, Sarge. Come here. How about him? Leave him there. Why? You heard me. Come on. What's up? He found the bell, didn't he? Sure, but how did you... I got a call from the lieutenant. This guy's on the level. He had got his okay from the CO of the company we relieved. Oh. Yeah, so we better just... I have found him... the bell, Mon Sergeant. I know, Padre, and your story checked out okay with headquarters. There was a misunderstanding. I, I'm, I'm sorry we were so suspicious, Oh, but... I understand, but uh, I think, if I may say so, that the private tiger still does not believe it, no? Well, maybe I do, maybe I don't. Uh, yes. I think I rest for a moment. Sure, sure. Have a cup of coffee, Padre, on me. Oh, merci. Uh, private tiger, may I ask you a question? Go ahead. Here's your coffee, Padre. Oh, merci. What did you do before you became a soldier? I was a boxer. Uh-huh. I thought so. I see by the way you stand and walk. I was a boxer, too. Amateur. And maybe I become champion, but I find out there is something better than a right cross to the heart. And what was that? A right cross from the heart. Sergeant, I have another favor to ask of you. Hmm? The bell, it is so great, so large. I would like to get it up into the steeple so that my people in the town may hear it and know they will soon be free again. They have lived so long without hope. I, I wish if you and Tiger will help me raise it to the steeple. Uh, tomorrow is okay. Well, sure, sure, if we're not too busy, be glad to. 
The rest of that day, the Padre was busy digging up his bell, and we were busy filling fire orders. But the next morning, after breakfast... Whenever you are ready, Sergeant, we will hang the bell. Well, we don't have a fire order until 10 o'clock. Think we can get it up by then? Oh, me, we, we three strong men, why not? Okay. Tiger will string the phone out to the steeple in case there's a call, huh? And who's that coming? A new guy, Mallory. Uh, hi, Sarge. Lieutenant Anders sent me down with a message. Why didn't he use the phone? Didn't want to trust it, I guess. Mm-hmm. What's the message, Mallory? We're moving out tomorrow. A swell. At this rate, we'll soon be through the Siegfried line. I don't think so, Sarge. We're moving the other way. Back? Yeah. It's a withdrawal to regroup our forces. The lieutenant says to be ready by 0900 hours tomorrow. Are you sure of that? His exact words. Well, I guess we won't hang the bell after all. I think I go to the church. But what are you standing there for, Mallory? Get going and tell the lieutenant okay. Do you hear? Okay. Yeah, 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 Sarge. Yeah, sure. That was a bad mistake I made, blowing off the kid like that. But when I saw the look on the Padre's face when he heard that we were going to withdraw... Well, I, I, I guess it sort of hit me what it meant to him to get that bell ringing again. Anyway, Mallory took off like a scared rabbit. And like a scared rabbit, he didn't stick to the path. What's that darn fool doing? He's heading right toward that open stretch. Hell, spot him, sure as... Hey, Mallory! Mallory! Before I could stop him, Tiger was out of the door and on his way. He was yelling so loud, I guess he didn't hear it. But I did. And so did the Padre. Before I could even move, he was on top of Tiger, knocking him down while Mallory disappeared safely into the woods. It hit about 50 yards away. When the dust cleared, I saw them lying in the ditch, the Padre on top of Tiger. They were okay, but if it hadn't been for the Padre... Yeah, I know. He stuck his neck out to save mine. Mm Mm-hmm. I wonder why. Look at him sitting out there by that bell. Sure looks down in the dumps, don't he, Sarge? Yeah, yeah. He's got reason to. I bet he hasn't lived for anything else since the day they cut that bell down. Yeah. (laughs) You know, it's funny. What is? Now, you see something happening to someone else, and you start to understand things about yourself. What I mean is, I was like the Padre once. You? Yeah. It's hard to believe, ain't it? Bit of hard guy with a chip on my shoulder. Ah, uh, take it easy. You're all right, Tiger. Oh, that's okay, Sarge. I know what I am. But I wasn't always like this. Remember that fight Mallory asked me about, the one I had with the champ? Yeah, yeah. I worked and trained and lived for the day when I'd meet the champ. And I knew I'd win. But I lost. You know why? Because my hands were taped too tight. My manager did it. On purpose. There are a lot of crooked things in the boxing game. Maybe it wouldn't have bothered me when I found out if it hadn't been that my manager was my brother. He told me he did it because his wife needed an expensive operation... This was the only way he could raise money fast. Hmm, that's rough, all right. Believe in something or someone. And then something happens, and after that, you're afraid ever to trust in anything again. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. You know what, Sarge? I hope he don't bury that bell again. I hope he don't bury the bell. It got dark soon after that, but the Padre didn't come over to our cellar. When dawn came, you can bet that one of the first things we did was to look over to the church. The bell's gone. Yeah. He must have buried it after all. Come on, Tiger. Let's pack up and go back to the squad. Hello, Red Dog. Yes, Lieutenant. Why? You're kidding. Well, it's great, sir. You bet. Roger and out. Red Dog to Blue Star. Red Dog to Blue Star. Hold everything, Tiger. Orders have been changed. We ain't moving out? Sure we are, but forward this time. We're advancing. Uh, Hello, Blue Star. Listen, Corporal Walker. Orders have been changed. Yeah, I know, but listen. I had a lot to tell Corporal Walker, telling him which targets we would fire on while we supported the advance of the rifle company. And it must have taken all of 15 minutes before we got squared away. But just as I was about to call the first fire order... The church bell. I looked for Tiger, but he was nowhere around. But bell or no bell, the war must go on. High explosive. Left stake, 1,300. Traverse and search. 
30 rounds. Hey, Sarge, the bell. Yeah, yeah, I hear it. He was trying to put it up when I got over there. He didn't bury it. He didn't? That's great, Tiger, great. I helped him get it up. Sounds beautiful, don't it? It sure does. Yeah, it sure does. Company A moved out, and a half hour later had occupied four back and had the enemy on the run. Shortly after, our jeep and trailer with Lieutenant Anders and the squad loaded on it pulled up. Okay, fellas, hop on. We gotta get going. Right, sir. Let's go, Tiger. Hey, Sarge, can I say goodbye to the Padre before we go? I don't think we have time, Tiger. Well, okay. Come on, Sarge. The jeep driver tore off down the road. It just happened that right before we turned the bend, I looked back to the church steeple. And I saw it. The enemy was zeroed in right on that ringing. I saw a cloud of smoke and dust as the shell struck the steeple. But with the sound of the motor and all, I don't think Tiger heard it. And I never told him. If you'd have seen the smile on his face, you would have known why. Well, now here I am once more. Right over the top of that hill is where the church was. I've come a long way to find out what I've been wanting to know ever since that day. And still, I stand here. The path is too small for my car. But that isn't the only reason I hesitate. The Padre had it, and Tiger refound it. But it's only a faint feeling within me now. Hope. And then suddenly, I start up the path slowly at first, and then faster and faster, until I'm running, running over the top of the hill. And there it is, the church, grown again from rubble, reaching with its steeple for the sky. Closer and closer I come. Who's ringing it? Who's, who's at the bottom of that rope? Is it? It is. Padre! Padre! And so the bells ring our story to a close. And perhaps ring in a new life for all you young ladies out there between the ages of 20 and 33 who are college graduates. You are eligible for an executive career in the United States Army. If you can qualify for a direct commission in the Women's Army Corps you will have many career fields from which to choose. Personnel and administration, legal, legislative, civil affairs, military government, many, many others. You ask your local Army recruiter about how to start your career on the right side of the desk, the executive side. And remember, gals, you'll enjoy life more in the Women's Army Corps. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this radio station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army. And this is Richard Hayes speaking, inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>